we have started our discussion on dislocations, which is a kind of crystal defect, it is a line defect and last time we saw edge dislocation in two different ways. One edge dislocation as the edge of an extra half plane in the crystal and in the another way we saw the edge dislocation as a boundary between slipped and unslipped part of a crystal on a slip plane. Now, every dislocation is associated with two characteristic vectors that is the dislocation is characterized by these two vectors. One of them is called tangent vector or line vector the symbol we have given is T and I have used a caret or a hat about T uh, to indicate that this is a unit vector. So, this T is a unit vector. Also, when I was discussing the dislocation line as boundary between slipped and unslipped plane, we said that we have a Burgess vector, which is the magnitude and direction of the slip. So, these two vectors characterize a dislocation line. So, let us look at uh, last time uh, I made some drawing, but I did not show you a model. There is a model here. Or to picture the edge dislocation. So, you can see this is an extra half plane and you can imagine the edge of this dislocation. So, the line going into your computer screen here, if I can put my pen there, so I can make it stand parallel to the dislocation line. Yeah. So, that line, that line indicated by the pen seen here is the dislocation line. So, entire half plane is not a defect, it is not a planar defect, it is a line defect and the line defect is concentrated here. So, when I wish to characterize this dislocation line, I need to know the orientation of the line. So, in this case the line is oriented into this model or into the your computer screen where you are seeing. So, a line going from the front of the crystal here into the crystal inside parallel to the bottom edge of this half plane is the dislocation line. So, we need to know which way in space the dislocation line is oriented. So, that is given by the tangent vector. Similarly, when I saw this in the dislocation line as a boundary between slipped and unslipped part on the slip plane, here the slip plane is the hori horizontal plane here shown by this uh, pen. So, the plane going into the crystal along this uh, line defined by this pen is the slip plane. On this plane if you see on the left hand side a plane is missing which is indicating that the first plane has joined with the second plane here. First plane on the top is joining with the second plane on the bottom because it is the second plane on the bottom but it is the first plane on the top. So, first plane has joined with the second plane on the bottom, the second plane on the top has joined with the third plane on the bottom, third plane has been left hanging. So, that is the extra half plane, the fourth plane on top is also connect is still connected to the fourth plane on the bottom. So, we can see that first went to second, second went to third, th third remains hanging. So, first, second and third have suffered slip whereas, fourth, fifth and sixth are still connected to fourth, fifth and sixth at the bottom. So, they have not suffered slip, they have not undergone slip. So, this half plane is the boundary between slip and unslipped part on this horizontal slip plane. So, when, when I look at it as a boundary between slipped and unslipped part, I need to specify the slip and in this case the slip you can see is one interatomic spacing here from the plane, the, from the originally existing first plane to the displaced first plane. So, this is spacing which is the bond length here in my simple cubic model is the bond length. So, this bond length this interatomic spacing or this interplanar spacing if you think in terms of planes 
is the um, magnitude of the slip and the direction of the slip is in this direction of the model in the horizontal direction. So, this magnitude and direction of the slip is called the Burgess vector of the dislocation line. So, these two vectors the tangent vector and the Burgess vector characterize a dislocation fully. You require to specify these two vectors to get the um, complete picture or complete uh, characteristic of the dislocation. Let me try to draw the slip plane, not the entire model, but only the slip plane. I think I had drawn it for you last time also, but I am redrawing it. So, last time we had not simply not talked about the tangent vector, that is the only new thing I am introducing, Burgess vector I had talked about. So, this is this plane is the slip plane, let us call this the rectangle, the external rectangle is representing slip plane of the crystal. So, that is the horizontal plane in this model, that is the horizontal plane here in this model. So, we are now looking down on that horizontal plane from the top and this is the position of the extra half plane. So, that is the boundary between slip and unslipped part. This is the dislocation line. And as we have uh, emphasized, the dislocation line is boundary between the slip part, the slip region, and the no slip region. So, the way I had shown you on the model, the left hand side was the slip, and the right hand side was no slip. Although these things can be interchanged, but we would want to go into that detail at the moment. So, we think of the left half as the slip and the right half as no slip and we have a dislocation line as the boundary between slipped and unslipped. So, the question is where is the dislocation line? What is the orientation of the dislocation line? So, we take a vector which is tangent to the dislocation line, we take a unit vector. So, unit vector tangent to the dislocation line is called the line vector. This gives the orientation of the dislocation line. So, let me write it here. So, T is the tangent vector also known as line vector. and this is a unit vector parallel or tangent to the dislocation line. And as soon as I said slip, so there is a direction of the slip associated and a magnitude of the slip associated. So, there will be a vector which will characterize the slip and that vector we are calling the Burgess vector. Now, the magnitude need not be unity. So, this is a vector which can have any magnitude. So, this B is we are calling the Burgess vector. Burgess vector, which is representing the magnitude and direction of slip. So, for every dislocation these two 
vectors are required as characteristic vector. We will have more to say about Burgess vector. There is another way of looking at Burgess vector, not in terms of magnitude and direction of slip, but in terms of a circuit called Burgess circuit. That will be a topic of another session. With these two vectors, a dislocation is fully characterized 